Alrighty, back on 77 after the final day of the uh, teacher workshop uh, up at the Mountain Lake Biological Station through uh, Evolution Education put on through uh, a couple guys at UVA. Um, it's uh, still a little bit in the mountains and it looks like it might start raining, so if that happens, I'm going to stop filming probably and uh, maybe pick it up later, unless it's dark, because I'm not about to be driving down 70, or up 77 since I'm heading north with uh, the dome light on. That's, nope, not, not gonna happen. But so far, it looks so good. So anyway, uh, third day, well, yeah, third day, second day of like full-on workshop stuff. Uh, again, it was awesome. We started the morning off um, doing Today was actually a little bit more of like stuff I'd already seen, but then some of it was like pieced together with stuff from yesterday. Um, was really good to look at like, oh, here's how things I can use and other things from yesterday that really support these other things. Um, so we did a little bit, um, talked about like big history, so history of the universe, Big Bang, stuff like that. Nothing like super mathy or crazy, just uh, mostly focusing on the time scale. It was actually cool, they showed a really great TED talk, which is, like real quick, but it does the whole gamut of history and hits some of the major events, especially a lot of the major events um, in physics, like this dude that gave the talk, uh, I wanna say it was like David Christopher or something, something like that. And I, I wrote it down, because I knew I wouldn't remember his name. Uh, it called it like Big History or Deep History. I think it was Big History. Anyway, uh, it was really cool. This guy clearly uh, a physicist going through the physics things. And then we did the old, um, uh, in my school we always did it with a piece of like calculator, like receipt tape, do like a timeline of Earth's history. And how we would always do it is like measure out five meters, and then you know each meter is a billion years, so it gives you a nice scale. This was a little different, it was a whole roll of toilet paper. And so first thing you gotta do is figure out how many sheets are on your toilet paper roll. It was supposed to be like 280, this one had like 265. So then each sheet becomes a certain increment of time, so then uh, the whole thing was just 4.5 billion years for the Earth's history, count it out, and then, you know, look at major life events, look up the dates. They gave us a date, so then, you know, go through, figure out the scale, figure out how many sheets of toilet paper that is, put sticky notes on there, because you can't, like, draw and write stuff on toilet paper the way you can with receipt tape. It just, it's not, it's, it's not gonna work. But, so that one, I've, I've, I've actually taught that unit and that particular lesson before, so that was kind of just like, yeah, I already know you could just said like, and the toilet paper, and then moved on. But it was still kind of cool to like geek out with other like bio people and do like math stuff. And then uh, moved on to some uh, HHMI uh, activities. One I'd already heard of from uh, Ann Brokaw up with uh, HHMI up at uh, Rocky River High School. She's like, she does AP Bio and also coordinates like is like, I think like has a stipend through HHMI maybe to even like align HHMI activities, which is for the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. For those of you that don't know, awesome, awesome biology resources. A lot of, a lot of good stuff on evolution, on uh, metabolism. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff that really focuses on disease really well. So that's just great resources. But uh, Ann Brokaw actually works for them, I think either through a stipend or some kind of contract and she goes through and like aligns it to NGSS, aligns it to Ohio standards and aligns it to AP bio standards. So I'd already gone to a workshop with her. I knew about, um, it's a good extension for cladograms. You get like mollusk shells, you lay them out. It's balls hard to do <laughs> with just like morphology, just looking at these shells, trying to make a cladogram of it. Uh, but it fits in really well with the, the great race thing that we did yesterday, uh, which is a perfect intro, like way better than cladogram in a bag, way better for introducing cladograms. Uh, but this is a good extension, but what's cool about it is you do, so you do morphology, and it's meh. But then, uh, all these different um, mollusk shells, uh, their genes have been sequenced. And so you can actually get in and use like actual data that actual scientists would use, and use a real tool that like systematic scientists would use, and even to some degree, uh, evolutionary biologists would use to generate uh, some systematics which is, which is awesome, it's, it's just really cool. So you get in and you actually look up the gene sequence for, um, what was it, it was like a cytochrome subunit one, cytochrome oxidase subunit one, 
the gene for that across all these different mollusks, and it's all been sequenced. And you can look the, that up on like like a, a MBCI has like a, just a database of like just all these genes. And so you can look that up, and then you put it into this really cool French phylogeny website that. Oh, there's like a dude and things and people. We put it in this French website that you just like copy paste all the gene sequences in and it totally generates like a phylogeny or a cladogram for you based on genetic similarities. And it'll give you like on each uh, branch, it'll give you a confidence interval of how well, like based on like how well these genes line up and whether we think like it's an insertion, deletion, substitution, uh, SMP, which is a uh, SNP, which is just like a polymorphism, which are usually in species instead of between species, but I guess could also be a whatever, uh, a substitution pretty much. And, but so, you know, it does its best to like line that up and find the similarities. And so it, it'll give you like a confidence interval, like this is how confident we feel. Um, a lot of AP bio labs have used this um, if not, you should definitely check it out. It's it's sweet. Links in the description. It's good nerd fun just for even just to play around with because you're bored and nerdy. <laughs> but it's uh, but the, so that was cool. And that was a lab I already knew about. But it's a perfect extension. Or even like you hit cladograms like in the beginning of the year, go through a blah 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 blah, and then when you do like gene se DNA sequence and like like A, T, C, and G and say, okay, like that's a code that goes through these traits and then you can hit it again. So they're getting cladograms through multiple times through the year and just reinforcing that uh, these evolutionary relationships are, you know, a prevalent theme. Like it's not just one unit in biology, it's an overarching theme that really, um, the NGSS calls it a cross-cutting concept that it does is just that throughout all of biology is this theme of evolution and really, uh, most biologists, especially evolutionary biologists, would argue that nothing in biology makes sense if you don't look at it in the under the lens of evolution. So it's a cool ways to like keep keep hitting that and talking about more of the evidence as the years go on. So I mean, you can use it either way. You can use it right after doing cladograms and just keep pounding cladograms because it's enough to just know like this gobble to go because of gene. Those are the instructions for you. Uh, different things, obviously, with different stuff. You should have different instructions. So let's get crazy. So that was neat. And uh, then went through an HHMI uh, activity that I didn't know about, that's did not know, that's really similar to that, uh, works with lizards. But what's really cool is it's like four different modules, and they've got it set up all virtually, um, that actually has the kids doing the process and like measuring stuff like snout vent length and like hind limb length and doing like a body length versus limb length like ratio, which is stuff that actual like like this study has actually been done and you actually go through and collect data based on pictures taken and submitted by actual field biologists and so it's, it's literally like exactly what the biologists would have done minus the getting to go to a tropical place to collect these animals these these cool little lizards that are like everywhere and all over the place but you, you do all the same like other like stuff like x-raying them measuring them running this like stats it even goes through like a little like like mean, standard deviation, standard error, make the graph, error bars, is a significant yes or no, yada, 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 which is, which is sweet, I mean, really, but that goes through, like, four parts, and, uh, gets really in-depth with, like, just looking at, like, this building, and you can take any one of the four, and it would be good, or you can do all four together, because they build on each other, so I didn't know about that one, it's, it's gonna be, each one of those modules, except the fourth one, it's the only one that you could pound out in a day. The fourth one was about like do lab variation. It's got this cool like little color slider. So you're just looking at like uh, middle color and tip colors of do labs, which are these like structures that they have. Like I guess it'd be like I don't know, it's like like in Jurassic Park, the, the dinosaur that spits on the guy in the original. It's got that thing like off the side. This is like just one like down. I see it's mostly be used for like mating, like mate attraction, like peacock, like plume, and like intimidation and like flashing and like, like, I'm scary, I'm big, don't mess with me, dude, or I'm scary and big, I have desirable traits, come mate with my babe. <laughs> so, but it looks at like variation with that uh, among different species and even, uh, uh, yeah, so you can use that to like work out evolutionary relationships as well. But, it, but it's really cool because the big thing we were talking about yesterday was the big like, um, 
they call it G by E for short, but it's like the interplay between genetics and environment. And that's a huge deal in the NGSS. And also uh, because the NGSS is super similar to the Ohio high school standards, uh, in the Ohio standards too, and just that like interplay of like, yes, it's genetics, but there's this phenotypic plasticity. And so in different environments, the same genes will be expressed at different levels and that there's that both of those have an effect together. So it's not just the environment affects this and genetics affects this heritability, but also like together, uh, different combinations of those will have uh, different effects on phenotypic expression as well, which is like crazy and really complex. But, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about the ways that like once you set up all the other stuff that you really pound home these like big rock stuff that scientists are studying right now and especially um, like this whole workshop was about like finding ways to like get actual data because that's a big thing in the new standards is like the kids actually doing statistics and actually using data not just knowing what natural selection is but looking at experimental data and crunching the numbers and showing that there's a statistical like yes natural selection is a thing with actual evidence like a scientist would so you know it, it's just cool to like start building this network with like scientists doing like research in these fields and having a large amount of data that we can call from if not and and maybe even like do some experiments or even do like some part of their research in conjunction like you know especially um with these anole lizards that the, the Cox and Harding lab are like working with, um, they go through and they have got this whole database of just like all these like processed lizards and their characteristics and then somebody has to call through and like look at different traits and blah, 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 passing down the mountain when she comes. I'll be passing that SUV cause it's slow. But you know, that's, that's stuff that you could, you, you could probably potentially turn over to high school kids and say, okay, well, let's look at this stuff and what, what features do you guys find interesting? Because a lot of times when you're doing studies and you're just so into like, I've been looking at this data forever, you know, you need a fresh set of eyes to get in there and look at it and see potentially what you've been missing. Also going down a huge like 5% grade right now. Man, I love having a manual, it's so good in the mountains. Love it, love it, love it. So yeah, that was some of the stuff that we, we were looking at on day three. And those were good. Like I said, some stuff that I'd already looked at before that I probably shouldn't have spent so much time explaining because I'm sure most of you are just like, too long and not watching, I'm out. Ah, sorry, I'm boarding in a car and I want to process the awesomeness floating in my head. So like with all the vlogs, mostly for me, I guess maybe for you. Eh, whatever. Anyway, but the, the final two things of the day were really the best because I, mean, I went to this to like little mini workshop at UVA last year and we just talked like very briefly just about like some of the things that you can do like in, but but not really practical, just like yeah you can get cockroaches or mealworms and do like stuff like that. It's like oh awesome. I've taken one zoology class and it's basically just enough to know what those things are not like I don't know enough about these creatures to like come up with labs and stuff I could actually do so at the end of the day was pretty much just like a share out of like okay so what are some like we've talked about some things already what are some things that you're already doing like especially with animals or plants or anything that's like awesome and an actual experiment not just like a proof of concept lab or like a modeling demo of like here's this thing here's some like stuff to touch so you can understand it a little better which is useful but not not as awesome as an actual experiment that also supports the topic that kids can like play around with and collect data and do stats on it like math and like stem stuff so we talked about that and got some like really really cool ideas especially um farmer and i actually looked at a couple of these like biology in a bottle but apparently you can just get like top bottle has like soil a plant doing whatever with the top open for gas exchange roots stick down into a bottom jug bottom bottle in two liter bottles and in that bottom bottle you totally like seal this thing in and it's got like a little bit of gravel water duckweed in the water beta fish in there but 
the, the betta fish will eat the duckweed. The duckweed, uh, you put like a little bit of like nitrogen fixing, like aquarium water in there, just, just a bit to, to get the nitrogen cycle going. But you can seal it up when you're all done, like looking at data, and like it'll go for years. Like you can just sit it in a window or under a grow light and it'll just go to town. But what's cool about it is you can use that as a, for uh, biogeochemical cycles, and it makes it like not just lame like, here's some cycles and some diagrams, let's get weird here. You can actually like get data and actually watch these cycles happening, which is, and I think it'll work way better than the like stinky like debris in a jar lab, because those just like go and crash and get gross. And there's protists and the kids like, oh, cool, gross stuff. And it smells bad, but this would be way cooler to actually like, like look at those systems, like even like do something, like look at them together. Like here's a system when it goes bad, here's a system when it's in balance, and you can see like it's a self-containing like you just seal that thing up and it apparently just takes care of itself, which would be sweet. And, and some other stuff like some, like a bunch of different labs, like with like, not just selection, but like um, like uh, variants and phenotypes and use that to like talk about how like variability helps uh, populations survive better. Like that's solid ecology, but a lot of cool like metabolism labs and just different stuff that you can do that's like interesting but also like has labs so the kids can work through experimental design, like actually do some science, crunch some numbers, make some graphs. And yeah, it, it just like that was definitely one of the most useful parts, probably the most useful thing from the whole experience, like between that and seeing like some of the research that's being done at the uh, Mount Lake Biological Station and knowing that these are all people who are like super willing to like, like talk and send specimens and do whatever with high school kids even if it's just over skype or like through like fedex and like really like bring the science to the kids and connect kids and connect teachers with current research just awesome and then we had like a little wrap up talk about our takeaways which is always good to see like what different people find useful and like what spin that we can put on things because realistically like aaron and bob like aaron has some like high school experience not a lot of middle school, well, no middle school experience. Bob has no, like, like non-academia other than, like, when he went to, like, school experience in a classroom. So, like, it was, like, I think that was good for, like, they enjoyed that out of us. And it's also good, like, just networking with our colleagues saying, like, oh, yeah, this is how I would use that, and this is what I could do with that. And, like, oh, that's a great idea. You could throw this in on top of it. And just that, like, organic collaboration that I, that I really wish our TBT meetings were more of, more of the time. We got a little better towards the end, but a lot of it's just so bogged down in these things we have to do. And I guess that's enough TBT out of me about our TBT. And then, you know, wrap up, eval, played another couple games of horseshoes, and it turns out actually I'm worse at horseshoes when I can see the peg than I am in pitch black. Uh, played a couple quick games of horseshoes, ate dinner, and then like part way through dinner, I was just like, yeah, this is gonna be a long drive. I really would love to just stay, hang out, chat more, but I'm out, guys. Um, so yeah, that was that was the the final day of the workshop. Still best PD ever, 100% uh, best PD ever. So uh, all probably none of you that made it to this point in the video. Thanks for uh, watching all that. I don't know why you would do that to yourself, but there it was. I'm sure it was ridiculously long. Uh, that's all out of me. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm pulling into a toll booth pretty soon, so I've got to get my change ready to pay two dollars for this '77 West Virginia Turnpike. Uh, I don't know. Comments. Put things. What are your thoughts? Too long? Too short? Not rambly enough? Too rambly? What do you guys think that uh, I could bring in, like science or not science or whatever? Get weird. Thanks for watching.